everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about dividing radicals. Now before we get started on this is that this is uh, based on and entirely crucial that you understand and completely know how to simplify radicals. So before you watch this video, if you are not 100% confident on simplifying radicals, please, 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 I'm begging you, go watch the video. It's linked in the description below. Make sure you have that down pat before you move on. If you need a video or help with multiplying radicals, that's a separate video. Link is also down below. Okay, so when we are dividing radicals, they are almost always going to be presented like this. Honestly, I can't think of an exception, but you know, some math book out there might try it. So that's what I'm going to say. Almost always presented like this. There's always an exception somewhere. And unlike other types of division where we are trying to get an absolute answer, like say if I were to present this like 35 divided by seven, and I chose to write it as 35 divided by seven, I'm trying to get a single number or a single, you know, with a decimal or with a remainder, whatever the case may be. In simplifying radicals that are being divided here, that's not going to happen that often. You are usually going to be left with a fraction at the end. That's very common. It's more common than not having a fraction at the end, frankly. It's ju it just is. So the big thing we're trying to do here when we divide is not necessarily to get rid of this division. We're trying to get rid of this radical. That's it. So the big steps, there's two of them. The first one is we want to get rid of the radical in the denominator. Up on top is fine. Up here is fine. Down here, no bueno. You cannot have it down there. We want to get rid of that radical. And then once that radical is gone, we want to simplify what's left. If once we simplify, it is still in the form of a fraction, that's fine. So here's how we get rid of that radical. This is all going to be based on the principle that if I have a number over itself, not including zero, any number besides zero over itself, it is equal to one. And if I multiply any number times one, I still get the same number. I'm not changing anything. So we can multiply by a number over itself and I won't change anything. So what I'm going to multiply by is that bottom radical over itself. So the square root of three over the square root of three. Now I mentioned multiplying radicals and this is why if you haven't done multiplying radicals yet, this part is going to look a little strange. On top, we have square root of 12 times square root of three, which is the same as the square root of 12 times three. And on the bottom, square root of three times square root of three just gives us three. Multiplying the square root of something by the square root of that same number just gets rid of the square root and we are left with three. So on top, we have the square root of 36. On bottom, we have three. In the square root of 36, hey, that is a perfect square. Woohoo! The square root of 36 is six. Six divided by three is two. In this case, we can go all the way down to a single number. Just be prepared. This is not common, but it's a good place to start to show the principle involved. So again, we got rid of the radical and then we simplified as much as possible. We simplified the radical on top and then we saw if there was anything we could cancel out and there was, and we got our final answer. Now this one I want to show you because I have this number here in the bottom, the square root of 27. I can actually simplify that before I get rid of that radical. Generally speaking, that's my advice to you is if you can simplify that radical that's on the bottom, it usually is in your best interest to do so before you get rid of the radical. Because otherwise I'm multiplying by square root of 27 over square root of 27. And then I'm going to have square root of 270 on top. And I have to worry about simplifying that. It's a lot easier to simplify the numbers when they're smaller. It's just easier to find those perfect squares. So here in 27 on the bottom, 27 is the same as nine times three. Just going to write that down there. And nine is a perfect square. So I can take the square root of nine and bring it out. So on the bottom, so that five, the three comes out. 
I have a square root of three left behind and on top is still the same. I haven't changed it at all. Now I have three square root of 10, five times three is 15 square root of three. Now this is a little, a little simpler to simplify because I need to get rid of this radical over the square root of three. So I'm going to multiply by square root of three over square root of three. So on top, the three on the outside stays the same. And now under the radical, it's 10 times three. And on the bottom, I have 15 and the square root of three times square root of three cancels out to be just become three. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna look and go, hey, I got a three on top and a three on the bottom. I can cancel those out. Woohoo! I love canceling. It's a, it's a geeky little math joy. I'm just like, ha, less work later. I can cancel you out. You're gone, random threes. It's amusing me. So we have on top, we have the square root of 10 times three or 30. And on the bottom, we just have 15. Can 30 be simplified? The square root of 30, can that be simplified anymore? Well, if you don't know offhand, a good way to check is always to do a factor tree. And if I factor this into its prime numbers, factors, I get two, three, and five. There are no pairs there. There's no sets among these factors, two, three, and five. So there are no perfect squares inside 30. I'm at my simplest, square root of 30 over 15. The next type of tricky problem they can throw your way is if it's not a square, if it is a cube or a fourth root, cube root or fourth root, or something even higher, if they're really mean. Hopefully you won't encounter that <laughs> in your class because that's, that's cruel and unusual. And you'll see why in a second. So we have the cube root of five over four times the cube root of four. How do I get rid of this cube root? Would multiplying by the cube root of four over cube root of four get rid of it? No, it wouldn't. The reason that multiplying like the square root of three that we did times the square root of three gets rid of it and just becomes three is because we are asking when we say the square root is what number multiplied by itself, there, so there's two of them, equals three. So what number multiplied by itself equals three? What are we doing when we say the cube root of four? We're asking what number multiplied by itself three times would equal four. So to get rid of that radical, I gotta do it twice so that there are three cube roots of four. There's one, two, three, and then it cancels out and becomes just the number four. So that's what you gotta make sure when you're doing this cube roots, fourth roots, whatever, that when you're multiplying, that you have enough of them set up, enough of these pairs that equal one, <laughs> You have enough of them, so like this is a cube root, I wanna have three of them being multiplied across the bottom. The fourth root, you would have another one so that you would have four multiplied across the bottom. There's fifth root five and so on and so on forever. That's why I said, I hope they don't give you like a fifth root or sixth root because that's just mean. So what happens on the bottom? All of those cube roots cancel out. So it just becomes four. You have that original four from here, and then I have the four that comes from multiplying these together. So four times four. On top, I have the cube root of, because they're all cube roots, I can combine them, five times four times four. So the cube root on top, five times four is 20, 20 times four is 80. And on the bottom, I have four times four or 16. Now, does 80 have any cube roots in it? I'll tell you right now, two cubed is eight and eight does go into 80. Now, perfect cubes are not something we're normally asked to memorize in our math classes. So if you didn't know that offhand, don't worry about it. Don't feel bad about that, please. You know, it's just not something we normally you know, have in our brains. It's not like the times tables. So the way you can do this, if you don't know offhand, if there's any perfect cubes, again, our lovely little factor trees, this one go to sorry, two and 40, and that goes to two and 20 two and 10, two and five. And you're looking for sets of three matching numbers. So I have two, 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 two and five. And sure enough, there's a set of three matching numbers, two times two times two. And there's my cube, two times two times two, which is eight. So that's how you find those perfect cubes. All right, so the perfect cube eight 
can come out. The cube root of that is two. So the two comes out and I have that 10 left behind because eight times 10 is 80. And on the bottom, I have that 16. Now I'm like, oh, I'm done. No, you're not done. <laughs> you're not done until we check and see if there's anything here that we can simplify. And sure enough, there is. Two goes into two one time. It goes into 16 eight times. And we are left with the cube root of 10 over eight. And like I said, this doesn't necessarily look way simpler than this. Like, okay, how have I divided that? It doesn't look any simpler. It's just got to get rid of that radical. That's the key. That's what they're wanting you to do. All right. And last, but certainly not least, what do you do if there's variables involved? It's the same thing. It's nothing to be worried about. You made it through all those. You can do this just fine. It's the same exact principles. We're going to get rid of that. Uh, square root on the bottom by multiplying by square root of 10 n over square root of 10 n. So on the bottom, those cancel out and I am just left with 10 n. On the top, they get combined. 8 times 10 is 80. n to the fourth times n is n to the fifth. Now I'm going to see, can I simplify anything in this top? Now 80, the biggest perfect square that goes into it is 16. Now, if you did not know offhand that 16 times 5 is 80, I don't blame you. It's not a common times table that we're asked to memorize. But just remember your principles when you're simplifying square roots. Like say if you looked at this and you said, oh, 4. 4 is a perfect square. It goes into 80. So 4 times 20 and bring out a 2. And ah, oh, there's 20. If you do it that way, that's totally fine. Just always make sure. This is just a good principle for simplifying. Double check if there's any more perfect squares and what's left behind to make sure you've pulled the biggest one. In this case, you would go, oh, four times five is 20. So I can pull out another two. So you have two times two on the outside and five left behind. And you would get to that four square root of five. So you can still get there even if you don't know the biggest perfect square offhand. It's a little simplifying radicals review tip there for you. So 80 is the same as 16, there's my pen, 16 times five. We have that 10 in on the bottom. The four comes out when we take the square root of 16 and into the fifth, when we're doing these square roots of um, variables, we divide by the root, the quotient that we get comes out, the remainder is left inside. By what I mean, well, what I mean by that is that into the fifth, we divide by two because this is a square root. Five divided by two is two remainder one. So it comes out as n to the power of two n to the power of one stays in, and that five stays in. And we still have that 10 in on the bottom. Now we've gotten rid of the radical. And again, last but not least, we are in the home stretch. We want to simplify if we can for the things that we've brought out. Can we? Yes, we can. There's an n on the bottom and an n on the top. So I can get rid of one of those n's. One n is left behind. Four and 10. Can I simplify that? Yes, two goes into both of them. Two goes into four two times. It goes into 10 five times. So on top, I have two n times the square root of five n all over five. And I have simplified that, uh, that radical, that fraction division radical. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.